Okay, I know I've been one of the YouTubers complaining about iPad OS 15 and how it, you know, doesn't take enough advantage of the M1 and there's no final cut, blah, 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 the typical YouTuber spiel. I'm sure you've heard it for better or for worse. And although I still kind of have the same thoughts from that angle, um, if I remember correctly, I am a student. Uh, I am 20 going on 21. I'm, you know, enduring a BBA. I really enjoyed Zoom University this past year and a half. And um, something that makes school a bit more bearable is my iPad. And you know, I just haven't been using it that much because I haven't been in school. But when I am in school, hopefully in person in the fall, I plan on making better use of this. And I just installed the iPad OS 15 beta. And a lot of the features seem very student friendly. So in this video, I wanna talk about why I think that. And also just touch on why I'm so excited to put this to better use once I'm back in school, taking notes and the like. So first up, I wanna talk about focus modes. And I guess you could just say this is like enhanced do not disturb mode. Um, if you hold down on the do not disturb mode portion of the control center, as you can see here, we have do not disturb mode regular, and then we have personal and work. Um, these two modes right here allow you to filter notifications from people and different apps, and also um, select um, particular home screens to focus on if you are working at school or at work or whatever. I can tap the settings button here to dive into this. So as you can see here, I have allowed notifications notifications from a specific set of people here. I can change that, add that, subtract people, etc. I can also choose particular apps, which is helpful because I, for one, get sidetracked from notifications from YouTube. If I had TikTok on my iPad, that would especially be the case from people. I can get sidetracked with conversations over iMessage or FaceTime. Um, so it's really nice to be able to filter this and also apps as well. Although I do have one home screen, some people have multiple home screens where they might have like entertainment apps on the second page or games on the third page, and you can filter which home screens you have access to, albeit you can still always access all your apps in the app library pane. Um, but yeah, that just helps you stay focused more. And if you're sort of kind of unofficially ADD like I am, and I don't I don't say that as in like I'm self-diagnosed, I don't think I am, but I get sidetracked pretty easily and having this feature is gonna be a godsend, I would say, while I'm in school and also doing homework in my apartment. The second feature I'm excited to put to use is FaceTime links. And this is one of the many new features within the new FaceTime app, which sort of got Zoomified, albeit I never wanna use Zoom again. I am sick of it after a year and a half of that, never again. But I love FaceTime links because now I can send an actual link to contacts over email or iMessage and make a FaceTime call feel more official. Like, hey, let's jump in at five and people have a link, you know, instead of awaiting a call. You know, like up until now, FaceTime has felt more like a casual video chatting app um, but now you know with these zoom like features I now feel more comfortable organizing a group call for a group project or stuff like that so I can copy link here I can send it to context as you can see here like my most recent I can also just copy the link and let's just say I go into like Gmail here. I'm gonna have to do so much blurring. As you can see, I'm in Gmail, not necessarily my school email account, but I'm composing an email to john at apple.com. Have no idea who that is, but I can copy this FaceTime link in here. So paste that in and boom, that is sort of like a Zoom link um, for FaceTime call. And this is also great because say you don't wanna send somebody your phone number or your Apple ID. All you have to do is send them a link and you can get connected. And also too, what's great is that you don't have to be on iPhone or you know Mac OS or iPad OS to join in now because now FaceTime is more universal. You can join in on the web so long as you have a webcam, just like you could with Zoom. I tested this out on my iPhone and Safari and of course Apple demoed how you can use it on an Android phone and a Windows you know, tablet or laptop. And this is great because at a university, not everybody is on you know an Apple product. And of course, once again, you can send this over iMessage as well. So I'm sending one to myself. I sent one to myself earlier today when I was testing this feature out and it's as simple as just sending a link. The next feature I'm super excited about is Quick Note, which you can toggle by swiping up from the bottom right corner of your display. And this solves that problem when you need to jot down a phone number or a fact or something your teacher says. When you have an app open, maybe it's FaceTime, maybe it's Zoom, God forbid, maybe it's Safari. And instead of having to whip out your whole note-taking app, whether it be the Notes app or Good Notes in my case, or Nebo or Notability, you just swipe up and go to town. And yeah, it works really, really well here. As you can see, I can just scribble something in here and then dismiss it by clicking Done. Um, notes also has a designated little panel or portion for Quick Notes here. And as you can see, I wrote something like, definitely need to check this out, and I added a link. And you can do that by opening Safari and and um, let me actually go to that one site here. So Etsy.com. Um, this is not necessarily school related, but I want to 3D print my own clone armor, which is totally, totally nerdy, but you know, 
surprise, surprise, right? So here we go, here's a similar page here. Oh look, this is a contextual quick note because I added this very link to it so I can pull that up here and add more to it so I can actually erase if I wanted to this little scribble here and maybe I can, you know, maybe jot down to myself something like, I need to buy a 3D printer you know, maybe like research, something like that. Um, if I had like another sort of image I wanted to add to this or another link I wanted to go to, um, I want to, for example, if I was to do this, I'd paint it blue in the 501st colors. So I'll look up 501st Legion Clone Trooper so I can find a reference that I like, like this one right here. This is an action figure so I can, um, I guess, sort of open that and then add another link if I wanted to. So add a link here, and there we go, I added that as well. I can open it up full screen, and now I have two links um, pertaining to this. Of course, this could be school-oriented as well, whether I was doing research, but I can't think of anything business-related right now, so we just went with this instead. But yeah, again, this is super convenient when you're in that sort of situation, when you're not prepared to whip out your whole note-taking app, and instead, if somebody asks you to jot down a phone number, or an email, or a fact, or whatever, you just jot it down right here, and dismiss it and move on with your life. And real quick, while we're on the topic of note taking, I wanna give a brief shout out to our channel sponsor, Paperlike and their Paperlike screen protectors. I've been using one for more than a year now and I just installed one on my 2021 iPad Pro model. And it's so great to have this texture back, this paper-like feel. As I told you in the past, I have always written with composition notebooks and having this texture on an iPad just makes note taking a lot more engaging. I've also been doing a lot more work in Procreate, planning out and sketching out thumbnails. So being able to draw on a real Realistic surface is really awesome as well. They sell you a two pack so you don't, you know, screw up the first installation or if you do, you always have a second one. And yeah, this is a must have iPad Pro, iPad Air and iPad accessory in general. And I'll leave a link in the video description if you're interested. It is an affiliate link. So if you buy one through me, you do help the channel out as well. Next up, I wanna talk about the new multitasking interface with an iPad OS 15. And of course, I'm not gonna lie, this wasn't exactly on my mind and things that I wanted to see in this update, but now that I've been using it, I'm very impressed with it. And I think it's gonna get a lot more people on board with iPad and just allow them to use it a little more fluidly and also you know, in more advanced ways as well. So as you can see, I can open up an app here and we have these three little dots here which allow you to toggle the uh, multitasking interface here. So you can choose to minimize your app or to resize your app to fit half the screen or like a slimmer portion of the screen. So I'm gonna choose half. And as you can see, it pushes the app out of the way, allowing you to choose an app of your choice, whether it's off of a home screen or the app drawer itself. So why don't I actually choose Spotify here? Let's just say I wanna to listen to some music or control that while I'm surfing the web here. So that's nice. But what if I wanted to open another instance of Safari with let's say an actual school related app? So I can go back home here and I can open up good notes and open up like an imaginary, you know, notebook that I've created here called marketing, even though I'm not in school just yet, but trust me, I'll have a notebook just like this. I can then do the same thing here, but what I can do is I can go to Safari and I can go show all windows and I can create a new window and then go back into the menu and then you know reselect good notes. This, there's a learning curve here, I'm not gonna lie. I just started using this so I'm not a complete pro with it, but as you can see here, I have generated a new instance of Safari, like a completely different like version of it uh, running without the other um, tabs that I have in the background, you know, the clone stuff. So I can actually go online here, let's just say look up, uh, you know, marketing, principle or product, sure, why not? So we can open up a website here, Vistaprint, you know, just a random web, Let, let's just pretend this is school related and then I can take notes here and then also switch back to my other window here and you know, have some fun, you know, and listen to some music and look up, you know, Clone Wars action figures. So that's nice here. And by the way, um, let's go back to that shelf interface here. This is really cool. So I can show all the windows here that I have uh, with Safari running. So it shows up down here. So I have Spotify and entertainment or this website here. And then I have also this instance of Safari. I can also make another, you know, window or instance of it if I wanted to check, I don't know, like apple.com or something. I'm just sort of pulling websites out of thin air, but you can see what I mean here. This is gonna be great for doing research. If you have different apps open, let's just say you have YouTube and Safari open in one instance or pain, and then you have Good Notes open and Google Docs open. Then of course you can show all of your windows here to be more organized or to jump into what you wanna do here so I can jump back into here. So this is really cool. This is very distinctly iPad, but also 
sort of kind of reminds me of a Mac in a way, but it's fresh, it's new, and I'm really happy with what they're doing here. And everything just feels a lot more snappy, just more snappy than what I've experienced with iPad OS 13 and 14. So I'm really happy with it so far, and I can see myself making use of these multiple, you know, instances, the app shelf, and also just, you know, enjoying the enhanced fluidity of this feature. So yeah. I would say it's underrated. Um, a lot of people weren't paying attention to this. I wasn't, I was like, oh, multitasking. But when I actually put it to use, um, yeah, it's actually really, really great, even in its beta form. And finally, I wanna touch on keyboard shortcuts here. And you're not gonna be able to see this um, from this top-down view, um, but I'll at least show you my keyboard. Um, so now Apple has added a bunch of new keyboard shortcuts, which revolve around the little like world key here. So to go home, you can press um, world H, and then if you want to toggle the dock, you do the world button in A. Um, Siri, it's world S. Control center is world C. Notification center is world N. You can switch apps by pressing the world button and the um, left and right keys also up for the app switcher here so I could be in Safari for example and then I can scroll over to my other instances which is really nice um, I can also of course use the cursor so this is getting to the point where I can toggle most you know interface you know uh, aspects without having to touch my screen which is great because then I can sort of use it more like a Mac and sometimes you're in a situation where you don't want to be you know going like this you just want to keep your hands on your lap maybe keep your iPad balanced on your lap if if you're not sitting at a desk, if like you just have this on your lap and stuff like that. So yeah, um, this allows you to use your iPad Pro more like a MacBook, and I really enjoy that. It's of course distinctly iPad. This is very iPad OS oriented, but you know, keyboard shortcuts are something I really enjoy with my MacBook Pro and in Mac OS. So I like how they brought that functionality over here. In short, I mean, this is not quite my whole like opinion on the entire operating system. Of course, you heard what I wasn't happy with, you know, what Apple did didn't include, but you know, it is a lot more Mac-like than I thought, although not in every way that I would like, but Apple can only do so much, I guess in my opinion, and I'll probably share this in another video. Um, a lot of these features could have waited. I mean, I wasn't dying to see any of these, but they're definitely quality of life improvements. And if you use your iPad all the time, like Christopher Lawley, he's been telling me how much he appreciates features like Quick Note and the new multitasking interface, because it does make a difference here, especially if you're gonna be a student with an iPad Air or an iPad Pro, or even an iPad 8th gen, or any iPad for that matter, that can run iPad OS 15. It can go all the way down to the Air 2, which is super surprising, and that just goes to show how much Apple supports their devices with times so regardless of what iPad you have, iPad OS 15 is going to be a great experience, which you should definitely get your hands on. The public beta has been pretty good to me. I haven't had too many issues with it, some UI or springboard glitches, but other than that, um, it's been pretty great. So yeah, install it if you're brave. Obviously don't install it on a device that you rely on to make money. But yeah, I have definitely been enjoying this. And I'm excited to use iPad more and more. Albeit, you know, for schoolwork, I do want to use it in more creative ways. Although I will say I've been using Procreate to, you know, um, plan thumbnails and stuff like that. But, you know, hopefully eventually I can use it for video editing more. But in the meantime, again, these iPad OS 15 features are going to very much enhance my school experience. And there's something in my eye. <laughs> I also bit my tongue before starting this video, so I'm in pain, but that is just part of the YouTube process. And that about wraps things up here. I hope this video was helpful. It is great to be back. I am trying to make higher quality content for you guys, which is why you haven't been seeing a lot from me lately. There just hasn't been much to talk about or say, so I'd rather put together bigger videos like this or higher production quality videos like this. this whole setup is the most elaborate thing I've ever done yet for a sort of, you know, two angle video. So hopefully you enjoyed this look here. Leave me a comment if you have any suggestions, of course, and expect more content from me. I have an iPad Pro review, a nuanced one coming up talking about sort of what's wrong with people's perspectives on the iPad Pro, including mine initially. And uh, yeah, I also have some more usage case videos coming up. I wanna share uh, my thoughts on an app that has been changing my life. So you'll probably see that in the middle of July. And yeah, I gotta stop, I gotta edit. Um, it's been a long day of work, but I'm happy to be doing this. I wouldn't wanna be doing anything else right now. And thank you for sticking with me, even though I've been not, you know, not posting as regularly, but like I said, I'm trying to make bigger and better stuff for you guys, even if it means posting less, but anyway. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, and of course subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'm Noah and I will catch you all in the next one.